the time. Do we need, are we good? Okay, thank you. All right, my name is Alonzo, and I am from Pima Community College, and I work as, as a STEM advisor. So we basically focus on helping students who want to major in a STEM degree to transfer over to the University of Arizona. I will introduce you to Joe, and Joe is uh, representing the University of Arizona. He is a transfer advisor who actually is housed at, the, at Pima Community College to help in this process as well. So Joe will give you a little presentation uh, a little bit later and we will talk about ourselves because we like talking about ourselves a little bit before we get started. So I'll tell you a little bit of my story. I graduated from high school and I was uh, not necessarily ever involved in my academics. So when I graduated high school, I barely graduated. So I was already tagged as a non-college bound student. And the reason I didn't focus too much on my academics was because I, I did ballet. So since age four, I did ballet, and that's really all I cared about, right? Just like athletes, sometimes they really care about their sports, but not necessarily their schoolwork. Well, that was me, and I was in that position. So when I uh, was in ballet professionally, I broke my knee, and that ended my career in ballet. So I really didn't, I, I already thought I wasn't college bound, right? I thought, well, I can't go to college because I didn't do well academically. But eventually I found a place like Pima, right? So Pima allowed me to start from the beginning of my math, my writing, my reading, uh, because I just wasn't you know, doing well in high school and I didn't care to. So when I started Pima, that's where they gave me the opportunity to catch up, to be college uh, ready, right? So um, that's basically how I started my career. So that's just a message to you for anybody who feels that oh, college is just not for me. Pima is a perfect place to get started because eventually I transferred to the university all right, and then I got my bachelor's degree, and then I got my master's degree two years later. So considering I wasn't college bound through my counselors in high school, I did pretty well, right? So let's give me a round of applause, right? Because I actually got a master's degree. I have a master's degree, but I got told I wasn't college bound. So I wanted to give you that part of my story just so that you understand that uh, although sometimes it seems impossible and college is not going to be the easiest, you can actually make it happen. If I did, trust me, you guys all could do it. So Joe, tell us a little bit about your story and we will move on with our presentation. Thanks, Joe. Oh, I guess we have to use this. Here we go. Let's trade off. You can grab that. Okay. Well, good, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the University of Arizona, one of the best schools in the state. Hope everybody's having a good morning. Uh, my name's Joe Forish. I work for the Office of Admissions and Student Enrollment. Um, I'm housed at Pima Downtown Community College because my role is working with transfer students. A little bit about myself. I'm a first generation non-traditional student. I waited 10 years to go back to school because everybody always told me school's not for you. I graduated high school with a 1.8 GPA. Not very good, right? So I came out to Arizona. I took my first math course at Pima. Figures I was out of, I was out of school 10 years, so I took like Math 82, just general math. After that class, I went home, told my wife, I was like, I'm, I'm gonna get a PhD in math. Well, I went up to the next level of math and uh-uh, math just wasn't my forte. But I did do two years at Pima. I transferred over to the U of A. I have a BA in geography. And then I waited six years. And I have a, a Master of Science in Geographic Information System Technologies. So I, I was a college student. Material, right? With my bachelor's, I, my GPA was a 3.89. With my master's, it was a 4.0. So almost double and triple what it was in high school. If anybody ever tells you college isn't for you. Who's heard that message before? So everybody here is talking to a college counselor at their high school? Yeah? OK, that's the best thing you can do, right? OK, good. College is for you. If you put your mind to it, you can do it. I'm living proof. Me too. And Alonzo is too. So a round of applause for me. Come on. Thank you very much. Thank you. I know, right? Okay, so 
he, he mentioned the classes that he started with. I started even lower. I mean, I started at the lowest of writing, the lowest of math, lowest of reading. So it took me a little bit longer to be at Pima before I could transfer, but it still worked out for me and it, it could work out for anybody who's really serious about uh, uh, going to college. All right, so we're gonna get started on this presentation. So one of the things that I wanted to show you, just because uh, it's ideal to just re imagine exactly where you're going to be when you graduate high school. And this is basically an example of what our West Campus, who knows where the West Campus is here? St. Mary's, right? So everybody's seen it, if anything, from the distance. And that's our campus right there, right? This is a very old picture, so there's a lot of houses now around it. But that's our campus, right? As That's where I'm housed. My office is right in that building. <laughs> And uh, when you look at the University of Arizona, this is basically uh, the entire campus. So when you put Pima West Campus on, P on the U of A campus, you're looking at about this area right there. So that's how big the University of Arizona is, which is where we are. And that's how come it's always ideal if you're going to attend the University of Arizona to get a bike because you're going to be traveling a lot while you're taking classes here. But the comfort is, is that when starting at Pima, typically you will be there for two years or three years. But that's the sizes of our campus. So you don't have to worry too much about navigating that huge campus or anything like that, like you would be at the university. Uh, and again, I'm gonna review that the first two years at the university, I'm sorry, at Pima, are basically identical to your um, first two years at the U of A. So that's basically all it means. That's why it's a junior college, because you will take your first two years at Pima Community College, like I did, and like Joe did, and then you will transfer to university and take two more years there to get your bachelor's. And then eventually, you'll be addicted to school, I promise you, like I was. And then you'll go and get your master's degree, and you will take two more years for that. Okay? So now, this is one of an, ex an example of what our classes at Pima looks like. So this would be, say, a chemistry class, which we always integrate. You get your lecture and your lab in the same classroom, right? So this is as big as it gets for you to be taking a chemistry class at Pima. And this is basically how the university looks when you're taking a chemistry class, right? This is the lecture, right? So it's basically a lecture hall. And that's where you're going to be getting your information. And then the lab is going to be separately from that. So this is how a lecture at the university looks like for anybody who's a freshman, sophomore, because you're taking your supporting coursework. So at Pima, you're looking at this size of a classroom, which is very comfortable, right? Versus this, who will ask a question here? In the middle of class, I would never raise my hand and ask a question because I'd be too embarrassed, right? So that's basically one of the things that Pima offers you is smaller classrooms and getting that same identical course that the university is going to offer you when you, uh, if you would have come to the university directly, okay? So another thing that's good about Pima is the tuition prices, right? So if you were to be a full-time student at Pima, say a full-time student would generally take 12 units. But if you're going to major in a STEM field, what does STEM stand for? Science, technology, engineering, and math, right? So those particular fields typically require labs. So you would eventually end up at a 14 unit schedule um, as a full-time student because you would be taking labs. And you would have to pay $1,057 to attend school that semester at Pima, right? At the university, this is basically the pricing here. So once you're at 12 units or more, which you would be at 14, so you would be paying $5,895 per semester. So that's a huge price break, right? You're paying $4,000 more to attend the University of Arizona than you would Pima to get identical courses, right? So that's how come it would be ideal to attend Pima because it's so much cheaper and you're getting the same class, right? So that's an example of what it would cost you to be at Pima versus a U of A. And with financial aid and the maximum award that you would qualify for, if you qualify, you would be getting each year 5730 I think it's a little bit more this year because this was for last year. So say, if you get a maximum award of 5700 bucks, then Pima is going to cost you with books and everything for your fall and your spring, $2,974, right? So that's more than enough to cover your tuition and your books, right? Left over from your Pell Grant, you still have 2756 for yourself, which you'll be saving so that when you transfer to university, you can use that money, right? But at the University of Arizona, if you get the maximum award, same amount of money, you actually still have to pay out of your pocket $6,000, right? 
So that's basically the nice thing about financial aid is that when you qualify for the full award at Pima, you're going to get more than enough money to pay their tuition for the entire year and including the books. So that's one an example I wanted to give you as far as how affordable Pima is and how you would be able to get your first two years taken care of at, at Pima or maybe three years if it takes you a little bit longer like it did me. Okay? Any questions so far? Nothing? Okay. So, Pima. It doesn't have on-campus housing, which is okay. You would be able to live with mom and dad, hopefully, you know, so they can still cook meals and stuff for you. And um, the parking is definitely free at Pima. Okay, your tutoring is free because especially in STEM courses, you would have to get a lot of tutoring sometimes. So you don't have to pay to go to tutoring, which is a nice thing. I know the U of A offers free tutoring in some cases as well, but Pima is entirely free for all the subjects. All right? The professors who have received their master's or PhD are the ones teaching classes at Pima. And most classes, of course, like I showed you before, are smaller. At our West Campus, we have about 9,000 students walking around our campus, but that also includes the weekends, all right? So let's compare it to Arizona, to U of A. U of A has optional living on campus, which is dorms, right? You would have to pay for that, and typically it's a high price to live on campus because it's convenient. Your parking is not free. You could pay at, at the lowest, I think this is a little outdated, but at the lowest last year it was $122, and that's like the farthest of the parking lots. Uh, for a parking permit. And to park in the, car, uh, in the car garages, which are typically closer to campus, you're paying about 615 bucks per, per year to park on campus here at U of A. So that's another break you get, right? PCC doesn't um, charge you for parking, U of A charges you for parking. The minimum would be 120 bucks that you would have to pay to park on, at the U of A at the, far, at the farthest of their parking lots. Okay, the teaching assistants are the ones who offer the classes here at, uh, at U of A. They are the ones teaching. So the teaching assistant is a student who is preparing to become a teacher. And those are the students who are teaching your courses at the freshman and the sophomore level coursework. At, at Pima again, they're professors that are masters or PhD um, recipients. Okay, so at U of A, I think this is a little bit um, bigger too now. Um, but, the last time I checked, there were 41,000 students walking around campus. I think it's probably closer to 60, right? We're at 42,360. Okay. That's going to grow next year as well. Yeah, yeah. So that's, um, that's basically the students that you would be navigating through to get to your classes on this big campus. So that's the biggest difference, right, of the number of students that attend the institution separately. And then our classes, of course, like I showed you on the picture, they're huge here at, on campus. And the reason they're so big is because they have 41,000 students that they need to serve. Okay? Let's see here. How much time do we have? Because I don't, I don't want to run out of time. <laughs> okay, it's 1043. We're good. Okay, so Pima has admission requirements in order to receive financial aid, right? So you do need your high school diploma, your GED to enter Pima Community College, and you need to score a little bit higher on your math classes to be eligible to be paid for by um, financial aid. However, if you, if you don't score high enough in your math, reading, and writing, you're still able to attend. It just may not be covered through financial aid. You might have to just pay that bill, which is okay, because that's the way that you would want to get started to become college ready. So that's just the way that it is at Pima, but um, they don't have as rigorous of a admissions requirement as the U of A does. The U of A will focus on your SAT, ACT scores, your uh, high school GPA upon graduating for entrance onto the U of A. We only offer an associate's degree at Pima, and we also offer the certificate for you to transfer to the university. The university will offer you a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and a doctorate's degree. Our main focus at the community college is teaching. We don't do much of the research at, at Pima Community College. We focus much more on the student and the learning process. At the university, it's a re research one institution, so a lot of what happens here on this campus is the research. So most of the faculty members at the campus are focused on the research much more sometimes than they're on their teaching because they're trying to get millions of dollars funded for their research, right? So that's one of the biggest focus that I think comes with our faculty members when you compare them to University and Pima. The funding from the U for the U of A comes from the state and the research that I just mentioned. And at Pima, the funding comes from the state and the tuition. 
There's a high percentage of non-traditional students at, at Pima, which are going to be age 25 or older. They're part-time students. They're married with children. Joe mentioned he was married when he got to Pima, so he was a non-traditional student and, um, and working adults at Pima, right? And the U of A definitely has more of the traditional students right out, right out of high school working on their degrees here. Okay. And what the university has is a collection of colleges that you would have to apply to separately. So the first thing you would do to apply to U of A is enter the university as a student and then you'd have to apply separately to enter the college of your choice. So if you wanted to get into the College of Engineering, it would require a different set of standards for you to enter them. So that's because it's a, a, a collection of colleges that you would be applying for. Okay. At Pima, we offer you a whole bunch of scholarships as well. So if uh, you are not eligible for financial aid, or even if you are, you would be able to apply for a, a, a lot of scholarships. And these are just some of the scholarships that you would be able to apply for when you're a student at Pima. And U of A, of course, offers you scholarships as well. And Joe will talk about that. Um, the way that you would want to enter Pima in order to transfer to university is you would complete a certificate, which is an AJAC, which we call the Arizona General Education Certificate. But upon completing that AJAC, you most likely will enter the university after two years as a junior, so that you're only at the U of A for your junior classes and your senior year classes. Okay? You will finish at Pima all your lower division courses, which means all your 100 so think about it like this. When you're a freshman, you take 100 level courses in college. When you're a sophomore, you take 200 level courses. When you're a junior, 300 level and 400 uh, coursework is for senior year uh, students. That's the way that it works out. So at Pima, you would be completing all your 100 level courses and your 200 level courses. That's basically what it means. And you would come to U of A and do 300 level and 400 level. And then you're done. Okay. So again, you know, you get the professors at Pima that will teach you those 100 and 200 level courses. And you would save approximately, through your four years, $19,000 by attending Pima your first two years, which is always a good amount of money to, to save, right? Otherwise, those typically convert to loans that you would have to be responsible to pay later, okay? And when you transfer to university, all you would be doing is taking your upper division courses, which is when the PhD professors start teaching those courses here at Pima. It's your 300 and 400 level. You'll get your professors not teaching assistants anymore. Sometimes you do, not, not very much. All right, let's see. So your community college, basically what, what this means is that if you're an engineering major, for example, your entire degree is composed of 128 units. So that means that what, the, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be completing 64 at Pima, 64 units at Pima, and 64 units at the University of Arizona. So that's basically the half and half because U of A, in order for them, for you to get their degree, they want you to pay for 64 credits. That's basically what it means. And some degrees are lower, 120 units. That means that you'll be doing 60 at Pima and 60 at the U of A. I focus on engineering because this is a STEM related event, so that's how come I focus on a STEM program. Any questions? No? Okay. And this is just a very confusing example of what it means. So at Pima, you would be taking all those courses that are boxed up over there, and it would mean that you have completed your first four um, brackets here at the University of Arizona. That basically is what it means. All those courses over there transfer as your first two years at U of A. They're identical courses, and you're good to go for your junior and senior year here at the university. That's basically what this means. And again, this is how they transfer over. Your writings at Pima are your English requirements at the U of A. Even if you are a, an engineering major, you still have to take writing. You'll still have to take gen eds, which are histories, literature courses, art, music, anything like that. So you still have to take those, but those are entirely equivalent as well from Pima, transferring them to the university. Okay, your maths, your physics, your engineering courses, they're all identical to U of A coursework for your first two years. Okay, sometimes when you're not calculus ready in engineering, it takes you a little bit longer at Pima, like it did me. It takes you three years, okay, instead of just two years, like it's typical for somebody who enters Pima and, and is calculus ready. Sometimes it will just take you a year to catch up on that math, like we were mentioning earlier, but at least Pima gives you that opportunity because the U of A wouldn't offer you that level of math class because it's too low in a sense, sometimes, okay? 
And this is what your three years at Pima would look like, basically. Some engineering majors or some other majors at, at Pima or at the university don't offer all their classes at Pima, so you would have to eventually become part-time student at U of A and be a part-time student at Pima to get a full-time status. So this is what it means, is that everything in blue you would take at Pima for that semester three, and those two classes in red you would have to take at the university as a part-time student. And you would do that again that fourth semester, your last semester at Pima. So depending on your major, this is sometimes typically what happens. All right, so I encourage anybody even now in high school to join clubs. That's what we do have at Pima and the U of A. It's just helpful because you get to develop your resume and your involvement because when you are out seeking employment, instead of the employer thinking you're out at home playing video games all day, they know that you're very active or proactively pursuing experiences to help you grow in that field. So we offer these type of things at, at Pima. I wanted to bring us an example just because I encourage everybody to try and get involved that way and they will encourage that participation here at the University of Arizona as well. Okay? And these are just different events that expose you to different companies like you've been exposed to today, what it is that they do. Be curious so that you find out exactly what you want to do when you enter college so you're not taking the wrong classes that are not suitable towards what you really want to be. So just be curious and learn as much as you can. I'll turn it over to Joe and he will talk to you a little bit more about what the U of A offers you as a transfer student from Pima. Thank you, Alonzo. So at the U of A, being that the cost is so high, when you're at Pima, we have what's called the U of A Bridge Program. And what it is, is you can join the U of A Bridge Program at any time. However, if you're in it for an academic year, which is a fall and spring, or spring and fall, we offer you a $2,000 scholarship. And you get that for four semesters. So you'll get $1,000 for each semester. Also, um, why should you join? Sir, can I make an announcement Yes. Okay. Uh, blue group, the first arrival group, lunch is at 11 o'clock, so once you're done here, go right into the ballroom for lunch. We have evaluations that need to be filled out, okay, so you see, and there are pencils in your bag. So if you don't have your bag, find your bag, get a bag, so you can call the uh, The red group, the, the later arrivals, but your lunch is at 11.30. So once you get out of here, you can uh, double back to the same room. Okay, and hang on there, go to the big zippers until such time as you can go into Thank you. Okay, so let's get back to the U of A Bridge program. I talked a little bit about the, the good part of it, and that's the money, right? We all want some money for college, correct? So what is it? It's a partnership between many Arizona community colleges, uh, including Pima Community College and the U of A that provides a direct path to pursuing a bachelor's degree, which means you're going to get to point A to point B the quickest. And touching on what Alonzo said, if you fulfill your AJAC requirements at Pima, when you come to the U of A, you don't have to take three additional gen ed units, which, like he mentioned, you're gonna have a classroom of like 300 people. But when you start taking the three and 400 level classes, you're gonna be in a smaller classroom, probably what you're used to, which is what, like 30 people? On a good day, when everybody's there? Or on a bad day when 25 people are there, right? So why should you join? It's guaranteed admission for most U of A undergraduate degree programs. And there's also ex exclusive access and perks. You have a dedicated staff for pre-admission counseling, like me. And what you'll do is you'll bring in your transcripts. I do a pre-evaluation to see if you're admissible into the U of A and to make sure that you're still at that 3.0. And let me back up a little bit. To be admissible to the University of Arizona and to be considered a transfer student, we require that you have 12 transferable units at time of application, or they can also be in progress. If you are under the age of 22, the Arizona Board of Regents also requires that you have your high school transfers. So that's pretty good, right? And we don't look at your SAT, your, what, CAT, and whatever other acronyms we have out there, right? So also, like I said, the scholarship money, it's renewable. 
It's $2,000. You should have a 3.0 at Pima Community College and at the U of A when you get here anyway. Really, if you're making that sort of investment, put all you can into it. Sure, what's the old saying? C's for a degree? But come on, you people can do much better than a C, I know that. If I can do it, you can do it. So when and how do I sign up? Uh, you apply, like I said, you apply for the U of A Briggs Scholarship one year before you're ready to transfer over to the U of A. It's a free online application. It's the same application that you're going to fill out when you apply to the U of A. The difference is you're just applying as a non-degree seeking student and it's free. And once in, maintain a minimum of a 2.0 GPA. What's that, a C? There's that C for degree. I encourage most of my students and most of the students that I see are 3.0 and higher. Any questions about the bridge? I do have some brochures up here, so afterwards, please feel free to grab either a brochure or a, a block A or a transfer bra bracelet. We also have a great class called STU210 Transfer Strategies. And what that is, it's a class that's taught at Pima by Pima instructors half the time, and the other half of the time, you're here at the university. So it makes you feel like a university student before you make that big transition. And what we focus on is taking that unfamiliar situation here at the U, at the U of A and turning it into a familiar situation where you're comfortable, you know where all the resources are on campus. We have presenters come in, everybody from, uh, Mock lectures, campus health, financial aid, parking. Because like Alonzo said, parking is not free here. Even for me, being that I'm an employee, it's still expensive. Yes, very expensive. And if that isn't enough reason to take ST210, what is the priority registration? Because after you're finished with the class, we walk you through the online application to make sure there's no bumps in the road, make sure that you have in all your transcripts, and then after, after you're admissible into the U of A, you get priority registration. So what that is is when the, junior, when the sophomores, juniors, seniors register, you register with them as well. Because classes are hard to get here at the university if you don't have priority registration and you're transferring over. When do I take it? Take it a semester beforehand, before you make the big transition over so you're familiar with the U of A. Any questions about STU 210? And you should take it anyway to come see me because I'm one of the instructors for STU 210. Also, being a transfer student, we have many resources on campus. We have the Transfer uh, Student Center, which a lot of people go to, not only for to mingle with other transfer students, but also tutoring. We have three professors that are transfer student center fellows, and they put together study groups, and it's very successful. Plus, you get to meet other people, and they have events on campus, off campus. I think the latest event they were doing was it's a soccer soccer game, but you get in a big plastic ball and roll around like a gerbil. So that's pretty fun, right? If you're into that sort of thing. Also, we have me many more. Uh, we've got the Advising Resource Center, which really helps you come up with your four-year plan and really focuses on you as a student to what classes you should be taking. We've got the Greek organizations, Sororities for the ladies, fraternities for the gentlemen, academic clubs, intramural sports like I touched on, service, and different social clubs. The, the U of A is pushing a 100% engagement, which means not only getting the degree, but we also want you to be engaged otherwise. So like doing the internship, having something to, to back up your degree, instead of, yeah, the, the degree's great, but look, I have some real world experience, such as maybe doing an internship with an engineering agency, 
or just getting real hands-on experience. All right, so that basically ends our presentation. This is my information here to contact me if you have any further questions or how to prepare on the entrance process for Pima or the U of A. We have our business card, so if you'd like to take one with you, come on over and say hi to us and we'll give you a business card. And uh, we also have freebies here. We have the block A here from U of A. We have some bracelets and we have a bridge program. Thank you everyone. Thank you everybody for your attention. Appreciate it.